Hi, I'm Bairav and for this season of Arts Parks, I was asked to pick eight objects from the map collection that I was really curious about. And I'm Shubha Shree from MAP and for this episode, we are looking at this particular painting. When I first saw this artwork, I was really curious uh, about the style this was in and it really got me thinking about abstract works mm -hmm. and how they make you think more when you compare them to, say, still life works. Because I think maybe it's because an abstract work, you're thinking and really mulling over yeah. what's actually going on in it. And so it, it kind of stays with you. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ponder over more of why abstract works do that like this one over here. Okay, so why don't we start with what you think is going on in this okay. case? Um, well, there's. I don't think there's a real proper exact thing going on over here. Okay. But um, if I had to say, that's definitely a fish. Right. And over here is a stone with kind of like a fish engraving on it. Um, I would maybe think of this as a fossil of that fish. Okay. And um, because the stone is over here and the fish in the stone is facing the exact same direction with the tail and the eyes looking the sa uh, same way. Yeah. So it kind of makes me imagine this being a fossil of that fish after like many years. And why did you pick fossils? Like what made you think of fossils in particular? Is there something about this form itself? Well, the stone, of course, there's all the shadows which kind of makes it seem old. Okay. Even though, of course, all stones do have shadows. You mean these bits? Yes. The bits that look worn out in the Yes. Okay. And um, uh, like I said, the fish is facing the same direction yeah. as the one up. It could face the other direction, but it seems okay. a bit deliberate. So if that's the main fish, this is the dead fish and the fossilized fish, what do you think is going on in the middle? I'm not sure, but uh, I'm thinking maybe of something like a futuristic ship. Oh, nice. Like maybe okay. that's like a window for people inside yeah. to look out of. That's the back or kind of like the deck of the ship. Right. And this is the front and it moves huh. this way. That's very cool. What you just did, right? That's exactly what abstract the genre of abstract art itself is supposed to do. Mm. You make your own meanings about them. You kind of interpret everything your own way. Okay? Right. Um, so now if you want to put all of this together, does it kind of make you think of something? Um, well, if you go with the same idea of this being the fossil of that fish, right. yeah. uh, you could maybe tie it to the, the, the idea of F ships mm -hmm. causing oil spills and mm -hmm. that like affecting marine life. Mm -hmm. So maybe like a story like there was this fish and then there came like this ship. Right. There was an oil spill and then the yeah. fish went extinct or something. That is a very cool interpretation. Okay, so if we take that idea forward and you had to caption this painting, um, what kind of a title would you give it? Well, uh, based on what I've been saying, the fish and the ship all go through water yeah and the fish goes extinct over time so maybe something like the flow of time hmm. or something yeah like the cycle of life and death mm. right actually this work is called real slash unreal and fishes in brackets okay that is the title given to it by the artist and the artist is uh, Prabhakar Barve. Okay. Uh, he was a Bombay-based artist and he is known for doing a lot of these abstract works like you said, right? We'll talk a little bit more about the artist himself in a little bit. Okay. But let's just think a little bit about the title itself. Um, so you said fishes and you kind of make the connection with the word fishes in the caption also, right. in the title of the work. What do you think is the real part and what do you think is the unreal part? Well, the real part I guess would be the objects that you understand first, maybe. Okay. So like there's the uh, there's the fish there, right, of course, engraving yeah. with the fish, mm. they seem real. That, I'm not, I still, I'm not sure yeah. about what that is. And um, it's not exactly a ship, it's not exactly something that you would see nowadays as well, I suppose. Mm. So maybe that's the unreal part. Mm. But if I was farther yeah. and I looked at this, I would think more of scales, maybe you can see there's the brown, the light blue, the dark blue. And they look kind of like scales of a normal of fish. fish. Wow, that's that's very cool. I'd actually never thought of that before. And especially with the colors, right? If you move around, you can see like that shine that happens yes. in the bodies of a fish. Yeah, yeah, that's very cool. Okay, so a little bit about the artist. Uh, Prabhakar Barve, as I said, was um, from Bombay. And he was known to make these 
abstract works, okay. but more specifically something called figurative abstraction. Okay. Okay. So if you think of abstract artworks in general, what comes to mind? Well, I guess abstract works, they're more like, you know, splashes of colors or just shapes or something. Okay. Or just random flowing lines or something maybe, mm -hmm. where the interpretation is completely open to mm -hmm. you. Whereas this has more of a concreteness. I mean, it's not definite of what yeah. it is, yeah. but it's uh, more co definitely more concrete than just like splashes of colors, which is what I would consider abstract. abstract art. Yeah, um, obviously abstraction in general is a broad spectrum, right? There are all kinds. Yeah. And this one, this style, the figurative abstraction style, is exactly what you described it as. Okay. okay. So it basically has forms and shapes that you recognize from real life, but when you put them all together, they don't really make so much sense. You have to, they are kind of open to be interpreted. Uh, you can make your own meanings about them. Right. Something like what's happening here, right? You know fish, fish and like stone and all of that. But together, it's not something you'll see in real life. Right. Yeah, so Barve uh, was an expert in this. Uh, we have a big collection of his works in the, in the museum. Okay. And they all have like this vibe of some bits of it I know, some bits of it I don't, I don't understand. Right. Um, it, it's sort of like that. Hmm. Uh, the other thing that he was known for is also playing with emptiness and the idea of space. Um, clearly here you can see there's so much empty space, right? Yeah. And there's no um, context of where this is happening. You don't know if this is land, water, right. sky, you don't know. It's just like this solid color. Yeah. So that idea. Um, you have shadows of course. So you kind of have a sense of, okay, maybe the light is from that direction. Mm. But that's it. That's all that Barve tells you. Yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense because he could have just made the canvas smaller yeah. or maybe drawn, every, or painted everything larger. Mm -hmm. But instead he just takes only a fraction of the space for these objects and most of the canvas is just the plain blue or mm. the teal. Mm. And um, I guess that has more of an impact on you. Like what is this empty space like how you yeah. said? or what are these things doing in just empty space. Mm. Uh, it kind of impacts you more. So I guess he went more on the idea of empty space isn't exactly empty. It has something that impacts you a lot still. Okay, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And it's a very cool um, connect that you made with the size of the canvas itself, yeah. right? He could have done it small and, and compact and everything is like in small space. But this is obviously very deliberate to have this large empty space and have just a little bit of elements here and there right. to keep you thinking. Yeah. What would be your interpretation of this painting? Um, yeah, like you, I don't really have a very definite interpretation. But when I look at this work and a lot of Barwe's work actually, they make me think of like the dream state and the subconscious. Mm. Um, maybe I'm also going by the title of the work, which is Real Unreal. Uh, and that's something that happens to us in dreams. Dreams in general, right? Do you, right. You see things obviously, you make connections with the real life, you have maybe um, episodes from real life that come to you in your dreams, yeah. but some part of it is always unreal, right? Yeah. So every time I see Barwe's works, every time I see all this emptiness, mm. uh, it makes me think of the dream state. That'll be, that'll be my interpretation. So what do you think this artwork could be? Check out the map website to see more artworks and make your own meanings of them. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get regular updates on all the other ArtSparks videos. Follow us on social media to stay updated on other MAP programs. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.